ToonSquid has updated and we now have a new filter section. So let's take a look at how it can all be applied. First off, all effects are under the properties menu with the insignia of two sliders. All we do is click the plus here and we have our selection of filters from the menu. When I apply the Gaussian blur, it automatically comes in at 20 pixels. So I bring that down to 12. As with all effects, they're keyframable and it's always going to show up in the timeline specifically. And then we can make our adjustments from there. Next is adjustments, which addresses hue, saturation, brightness, and contrast. You can use the sliders or input a specific percentage through tapping the number. If we work with a selection, we can copy and make changes to the duplicate. Or we can affect the base layer, which is a more destructive way to work. And again, everything is keyframable and the sections of effects are going to be nested within the timeline. Then we have pixels, which looks really cool when moving. I could see this having a really neat effect if we were mashing styles together in an animation, such as this. Next is chroma key, which is a clear path to things like green screen. And we can also change the key. And just for a second, I want to point out that as you're working, the effects button here manages what you can see while you're working. Apart from green screen, we can also utilize chroma key in more creative contexts. So here for this spinning item, I'm changing the threshold and I'm going to reselect my key. I'm going to duplicate it and then keyframe the underlying key color. I return to my upper layer and change the opacity and blend mode. And now I have a really neat way to delicately animate color, temperature, or weather shifts. Sharpness is a pretty standard effect, but we can also use it in subtle ways and in conjunction with other effects at once. So I'm going to bring in this spinning item again. I'll use the slider to increase the sharpness and you can see how it distinctly affects it. Now I'm going to create a grouping, make some adjustments, and specifically have sharpness going from zero to 100% with each one of the forms. Then with the two that are receding into the background, I'm going to keyframe blurs in reaction to one another, trying to emulate a type of rack focus. While the blur did the heavy lifting, the sharpness of the form up front remains a really good contrast to the activity of the forms going on behind it. Lastly, we have halftone. What I'm going to do is duplicate the layer and initiate the halftone, placing it on top. Finding a different type of rotation, I'm then going to rasterize it so that I can further apply changes. And now it's integral to the base image overall. I'm now going to apply halftone over the already embedded halftone layer. And I can redo all the adjustments just like last time repeating the process, but choosing the blend mode of hard mix this time. I'm now going to change the underneath layer and I'm going to divvy this up and adjust the half tone to each frame. I'm going to cut this down to a single frame for each, just five here. And now we have the option to loop drawings instead of making symbols. So let's do that. And we can pull to adjust the length of how we want this repeated add a little camera for movement. And then we have an interesting way of manipulating halftone into our work for a visual dynamic. There's so much more to explore that I didn't cover here. And this update is free. If you already have the app, just go to the store and update it and everything will be there for you to test out. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.